Today we're going to talk about adverbials, specifically infinitive phrases, participle phrases, and dependent clauses. Okay, let's get started. In diagramming adverbials, let's start with a simple sentence here. I went home early to shower before the party. stop and consider what you're looking at here. Always, always when you're diagramming, you need to take care of the main phrase first. So I went home is the first part of the sentence. It's the main clause. It's the first thing that you need to understand before you diagram. In which I is the subject. Went is the verb. And home tells us where you went. You went home where early when. All right? Keep track of that information. So main clause right here. You could just stop. I went home early. But you didn't. You added more information. And when you did that, you added an infinitive. To shower. This is the infinitive form of the verb shower. To shower. I showered. To shower. So this is another verb in its infinitive form, and it's going to create the infinitive in the sentence. To shower, this phrase, before the party. Which again explains when, which is adverbial information. When did I go home to shower? Before the party. So, you're going to have to di diagram all of this in your sentence. How do you do that? Well, this is a long enough sentence that I'm just going to have to erase the whole thing and then show you. All right. Always take care of the main clause first. I went. Notice that the sentence can technically stop. I went, I left, I stopped. I whatever fill in your verb. I went. So, in understanding grammar, the textbook that we're using this semester, that makes this sentence pattern six. So the main clause is I went. Sentence pattern six. All right, but you have adverbial information, which is where you went. I went home. So you have to add home into this diagram. Home is noun. So it cannot go on a slanted line. All nouns go on horizontal lines. So you have to just drop a slanted line down and then put a horizontal line for home. Again, all nouns and all verbs must go on horizontal lines. It is the adjectives and the prepositions and the determiners that go on the slanted lines. So there's nothing right here. I went where? Home. Okay. When? Early. Early is an adverb, so now it goes on a slanted line. And then the why. Here comes your infinitive phrase. To shower. The infinitive form is diagrammed just like a preposition. So the two goes on the slanted line, and the shower, your verb, has to be horizontal because it's either a noun or a verb. It's a verb. It must be horizontal. After this, you can now attach your prepositional phrase. Before, because prepositional phrase belongs to to shower. I went home early to shower before the party. It belongs to the to shower part of the sentence. So you're dropping it off a shower. Before, party, the. Again, noun, party, must be on a horizontal line. The determiner that goes with party is on the slanted line under it. Now, your textbook wants you to know what is the sentence pattern. You can think of this by breaking it apart into two sentences. I went home early, 
I showered, because now you have to conjugate, I showered before the party. I showered is also sentence pattern six. So both the main clause and the infinitive phrase are pattern six. I showered before the party. Pattern six. Okay. Let's handle some participles. Basically, if you can figure out how to diagram an infinitive or di diagram a gerund or a participle, you have figured out how to do all three of them because they're actually quite similar to each other. So this is not going to be terribly different. All right, participles as adverbials because there are options here. Here comes your sentence. The kids came running out of the house. All right, again, slow it down, consider it as two separate sentences. The kids came is the first sentence. The kids, subject, came, verb. If you rephrase this in an English language, it would say the kids arrived. In this case, though, came is attached to something else that indicates they're actually exiting the house. So for the meaning of the sentence, we could say the kids exited. The kids exited running out of the house. It's a little awkward sounding, that's why came is here, but there's your first sentence, this is your main clause. The second sentence that is here is the kids ran out of the house. Because again, once I turn it into a new sentence, I have to conjugate this. So. The second phrase that is here is running out of the house. Running is the participle. It is also a verb. And the rest of this phrase belongs with running. And that's exactly how you have to diagram it. Do the first part, the main clause first. Kids came. The this is the first sentence. Again, your textbook wants to know what pattern this is. The kids came, the kids exited, or the kids arrived, all of those are pattern six. The main clause is pattern six, because you could just stop here. But you added more information, running out of the house. All right, this is where participles look a little bit different, because you have to write on this entire thing here. So you have to bend the word running across the drop-down line. That's what you do for a participle. Running out of, this is a case where you have two prepositions in a row, so they're on the same line with each other, house, the. The kids ran out of the house. The kids came. There are two things here. The second sentence, the kids ran, if you just stop there, you would see it's also pattern six. So this is another case in which the main clause and the participial clause here are both pattern six. So, notice how the verb is coming off the other verb. It did this for the infinitive, it's doing it again here. When you add the second verb, it's going underneath the main clause's verb and shooting off. Again, the easiest thing you can do to help yourself is to think of it as two separate sentences first. The kids came, and then the kids ran. So that you can slow down and consider where the parts go and what sentence pattern it is. All right. As promised, let's look at an example of a dependent clause. Adverbial dependent clause. All right, so this is when you get into two-tiered diagrams. Again, break it apart slowly so that you don't get lost in what you're doing. So the sentence is, you should eat breakfast should say some, some breakfast before you take that exam. There are actually two complete sentences here. 
you should eat some breakfast and you take that exam. So slow down and consider your two sentences. Because the connecting word here is the before. All right. The subject of the first sentence is you. The verb is should eat. And then breakfast, you becomes in P1 or noun phrase one. Breakfast is in P2. This is a direct object. This is what you're consuming, the breakfast. Oops, sorry, two. So NP1 and NP2, but you have a whole second sentence here. You take that exam. The subject of your second sentence is you, again. Take is the verb, and again, you have a direct object. So you have a second NP1 and a second NP2 down here in this dependent clause. What makes it a dependent clause is the existence of the before. This is an adverbial dependent clause. You should eat some breakfast. Why? Because you're going to take an exam. Okay. Why? Why should I do this? Adverbial dependent clause. How do you handle this when you diagram it? All right. Again, this is big enough. I'm just going to have to erase the example and then put it on my little board here. Here we go. Handle the big sentence, the main clause first. The main clause always goes on top. You should eat and this is pattern seven because it has a direct object. You should eat breakfast. So handle that first and they put a little determiner on it. Some breakfast. Okay. Sentence number two, you take that exam. You take exam. Again, it's another pattern seven. So that's how you do pattern for the main clause, pattern for the dependent clause. They did have a determiner, that. You take that exam. Then you connect the dependent clause to the main clause with a dotted line. It goes from this verb to this verb because it's an adverbial dependent clause. This verb to this verb, and that's where you write the word before, which is in fact connecting the dependent clause to the main clause. Why should I do this? Because I'm taking an exam. Okay, so each time, slow down, consider what the main clause is, put it on first, go through and pull out the dependent clauses, subject and verb, and put it under there, and then go back and connect it with whatever they put here. Is it before? After? Like, it could be any number of words, and your textbook actually has a whole list, so you can go and look. But whatever it is, you put it on the dotted line from verb to verb.